Any iOS review, including this iOS 16 review, concentrates on two questions when should I update and what can I expect when I do? We picked when not if they're for a reason. iPhone owners nearly always jump to the latest version of Apple's mobile software because unlike our Android friends, we're not at the mercy of phone makers and carriers as to when we can upgrade. When Apple makes an iOS update available, it's available for everyone. Indeed, at the start of October, nearly a quarter of iOS users had upgraded to iOS 16, according to estimates by ad fraud protection firm Pixelate. The question now, should the remaining three quarters of iOS users join them in the brave new world of iOS 16? How to get the download in which iPhone support it? Well, you've already got iOS 16 installed and just want to get the iOS 16.1 update, or you're still waiting to take the iOS 16 plunge. You can get the latest software update by heading to the Settings app and tapping General. Select Software Update and then follow the instructions for downloading and installing iOS 16. To install iOS 16, you'll need an iPhone 8 or later. That covers any iPhone released in 2017 and beyond. That eliminates a few devices capable of running iOS 15 but left out in the cold with iOS 16. All iPhone 6 and iPhone 7 models can upgrade to iOS 16, nor can the original iPhone SE. Even if your phone supports iOS 16, older phones may miss out on some features, as with iOS 15. You'll need a phone with an Apple Bionic processor or later to use features like live text and visual lookup, both of which see new features in iOS 16. Lock screen changes. Easily the biggest change to iOS 16 can be seen when you wake the phone from sleep. Or if you've got one of the new iPhone 14 Pro models that feature always on displays. At any time, the iOS 16 lock screen is now customizable beyond just the wallpaper. You can alter the font and color of the date and time display while also adding widgets. The ability to customize your lock screen may be old hat for Android users. But it's a brave new world if you prefer the iPhone. As before, you can go with one of Apple's supplied wallpapers or use one of your own photos. iOS 16 even suggests photos that are particularly well-suited for lock screen wallpapers from your photo library. You can pick from eight different fonts in a multitude of colors. Though I've sometimes found it a challenge when using one of my photos to also find the right color contrast so that date, time, and widgets are all equally visible. Live activities. Another addition to your lock screen comes via iOS 16.1. As Apple opens up live activities to third-party apps, live activities are a new kind of alert that are designed to keep you updated on things that are in flux the score of a basketball game, say, or the status of a food delivery. Instead of constantly pelting you with updates, there's one persistent alert that remains at the bottom of your lock screen, showing you the ever-changing status. iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max owners get a bonus live activities also appear in the dynamic island area of their phone's home screen. It's another way Apple is using that very clever iPhone edition to keep you updated. Because live activities depends on updated to third-party apps, I haven't had a chance to test it when iOS 16.1 was in beta. Though I imagine a whole rush of updated apps will be flooding the App Store now that iOS 16.1 is here. New editing tools for messaging? You'll also find some noteworthy changes in messages, no surprise since Apple's texting app is one of the more popular built-in apps on the iPhone. iOS 16 messages adds the welcome ability to edit text messages ideally to remove embarrassing or confusing typos. You can also unsend texts altogether in messages now. Simplified focus in photos. A lot of the changes in iOS 16 are geared towards streamlining tasks that, while not complex, still took up some of your time. There's no better example of this than iOS 16 focus. Apple introduced focus last year as a tool for blocking out distracting notifications and apps so that you could home in on the task at hand. It's an effective feature, though I imagine the process of setting up focus modes for work or downtime. If you don't want to be distracted by alerts and incoming messages from your employer prevented people from giving focus a try, iCloud Shared Photo Library iOS 16.1 introduces a new way to share photos with friends and family. Initially part of the iOS 16 public beta and then dropped so that Apple could fine-tune the software, iCloud Shared Photo Library makes it simple to share photos among five other people, all of whom would have the ability to add, delete, and edit images to the library. New fitness app, only one new app appears in iOS 16, but it will be a familiar one to anyone who owns an Apple Watch. Your iPhone now includes a fitness app of its own, so that you can set movement goals, track your activity and close your various rings just like your Apple Watch wearing friends. There's even a fitness widget that you can place on the lock screen for an at-a-glance look at your progress. Future updates, iOS 16.1 is Apple's first big update to iOS 16. 
but I doubt it will be the last. Expect to hear about the iOS 16.2 beta and what enhancements and fixes it brings to the table almost immediately after iOS 16.1's release. That said, the iOS 16.1 update does add most of the other big features Apple's been promising for iOS 16. One big exception is the Free From Collaboration app promised at June's Worldwide Developer Conference. While it's primarily an iPad app, there will be versions for the iPhone and Mac so that you can contribute to Freeform's whiteboards in real time from any device. Freeform arrives in the iOS 16.2 beta that's currently with developers. Expect that release by the end of this year. Overview, as I said at the outset of this iOS 16 review, I've already made the switch on all my phones, and I'm not looking back. I anticipate a few bugs here and there, even after the iOS 16.1 release. Now more than ever, though, believe the benefits of having iOS 16 on my iPhone far outweigh the inconveniences that come with a new software release. I expect that once you upgrade, you'll feel the same. We are going to end this video right away. If you have any query or information to share, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.